In this video, we are going to find a way to break the tiling of this ugly train and making something better. Basically, as train is a big connected mesh, when we put texture on that, as the texture will repeat a lot, there is a problem which I call that train texture tiling problem. There is no correct or incorrect way to deal with this problem. Usually, you have to modify your shader code for train to fix this. So in this video, we are going to talk about the possible solution for this problem and you can apply one of this method or multiple of this method to fix the train tiling problem. But before showing you any of this solution, you should pay attention to one important thing. First and the most important thing is to choose a good texture. If you choose a bad texture, your texture will tile no matter what. So don't choose a texture which has a specific sign or it is darker or lighter at some part. Your texture should have a uniform pattern everywhere. First solution is artistic solution. I really recommend you choose this solution if you can. That is because the shader method are expensive and if you can avoid them, that would be better. So what is artistic method? You can block the view of the player so the player cannot see far away. You can put some grass, rock or tree on train all of this will help to break the texture tiling. This is the best solution and let's go to the next one. So usually you don't use a single texture for your train. Maybe you have a sand, dirt, rock and more texture on your train. And mixing different texture also help to break the tiling. Here it is also important how you mix them. For example, you can see I mix two different texture based on a noise mask. Next method is any type of color variation. This method is also very cheap method. So what I mean by color variation. So this is my tall train and I have a noise texture. I just make my train albedo texture darker or lighter based on this noise texture. This also helps to break the tiling of the train. In this method, you are not limited to make the train darker or lighter. You can also change hue or saturation of train. Next method is using a detailed texture. What is a detailed texture? Detailed texture are additional texture applied on top of the base texture to add a fine grained detail. Let me explain more about this. Imagine you have a rock which has this albedo texture. No matter how much high resolution your albedo texture is, even if your albedo texture has a 4K resolution, when the camera gets close to the rock, your texel density will decrease. In these cases, usually people use some kind of grainy textures to apply on top of the texture to add more detail to the base texture. And that texture is called detail texture. You can also add detail texture to the train and that will help a lot to increase the visual quality of your train. Also, it will help to break the texture tiling. As an example, this is a detail texture which I use in my alien planet demo. Here I combined albedo and normal texture in one texture to increase the performance. Maybe in another video I will explain about this method more. Now let's go to the next method for breaking the texture tiling in our train. Next method is texture rotation. In this method you just divide your train based on a noise texture and then you rotate each section randomly. I don't know if I can spell his name well or not. Quad's YouTube channel explained this method very well. I put a link to his video in the video description. Now let's go to the next method. Next method is distance based blending. So how does this work? Look at this train. The texture which is close to the player looks good. But the texture further away from the player is tiled. Now let me do one trick. I change the scale of the texture sampling. I make that bigger. Now you can see texture further away looks good, but texture close to the player has low texel density. But even with this magnification, texture really far away still looks tight. Now let me make my texture even bigger. This time the texture really far away looks good, but the texture near to the player is terrible. So what we are going to do here is to mix these three textures in a correct order so everything will look good. But how we are going to do that? For better performance, I like to do some calculation in the vertex shader and pass that to the fragment shader because the same calculation will be more costly in the fragment shader as we have more pixels than vertex. Basically here, we should create a black and white mask to mix these three textures. For example, if player is here, 
we create a mask like this we create a mask like this around player so here everywhere is white we are going to put the texture which is smaller and in the black part we are going to put the bigger texture one important thing that you should note here is that we have a slow transition from white to black and the length of this transition is really important so the player will not notice any discontinuity in train well now let's go to implement this in our shader code for train so this is my shader code i already defined an albedo normal map and roughness texture and i assign a texture to them down here i define some constant close distance is the distance which texture has the smaller texture size for now i define that to 20 meter but one thing that you should be consider here that we should adjust these constants which i defined here later after that i define the close blend amount this means in how much distance we should change from a small texture to bigger size texture basically this variable define this gradient here now i define a float variable to put my close mask in that as we calculate this mask in vertex shader and then we pass that to the fragment shader, we should define this variable as varying. Basically, varying means you set your variable in vertex shader and then you use that in fragment shader. Okay, we have everything here. Now let's calculate our close mask. In vertex function, we should first calculate the distance of each vertex to camera. I calculate this by subtracting the camera position from the vertex position and calculate the length of that. Now let's calculate our close mask based on that. I use a smooth step function for that purpose. Here a smooth step function gives me a value of 1 for every distance smaller than the close distance and it will give me the value of 0 for everything bigger than the close distance plus close blend amount. And between these two it is going to give me a value between 0 and 1. And now to see our mask, I set this to albedo texture. You can see it is white around camera and black further away from the camera. And even if I run my game, this mask will move with the camera. Now we should do the same thing for the middle distance. I just increase the speed of the video in this section. So this is my middle mask and this is my close mask. We don't need a far mask, you will understand that in a moment. Next I am going to define the scale of the texture for each mask. For now I choose this scale, later I can change them. I just remove the UV scale link in the vertex function as we are going to scale that later. Now let's define a function which reads our sampler 2D based on this mask and texture scales. I call this function distance texture and this function will return a vector form and it will receive a sampler 2D and a UV coordinate. First I read from my sampler 2D based on my forest hill. Next I'm going to read from my sampler 2D based on the middle scale and I mix that with my output based on the middle mask. I just repeat this process for closed mask. This is somehow like a splat mapping. If you did not watch my video about splat mapping, watch that, you will understand this better. And remember the order of the mixing is really important. So now the only thing that I need to do is to replace all of my texture function to this function. And we have a much better train now. You can see I need to adjust a little bit more my const which I defined before. But this is much better than previous terrain. Now this method has some pros and cons. The cons is that this method is really expensive as we read from each texture three times. Texture packing will help a lot to improve the performance here. Pros is that this will give you a visual effect very good for a large landscape. I can say none of the previous methods will give you a good result for huge landscape like this one. And this is my preferred way to break the train tiling despite it is expensive. Another thing that you should consider here is that you don't always have to use three level of the texture scale, far, middle and close. For example, if you have a train like a forest, as there are a lot of trees and grass that cover the ground, only two level of the texture scaling is enough. And basically there are more ways to break the train texture tiling, but I am going to end this video here. And if you have any comment, put that in the comment section. Till the next video, have a good time.